Hey, what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna be doing a full studio tour showing you how we record and what we use since I haven't really done a studio tour video in well over a year. But first, show some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. And also, be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. Link will be in the description below. And also, don't forget if you wanna come and set with us, check out our grows and just chill with us. Follow us on Instagram. Link to that will also be in the description below. So let's get right to the studio tour. All right guys, so this is a much needed video. A lot of you guys were asking me what I use in the studio. I know a lot of you guys love listening to my music. You guys wanna know what kind of setup we got, how we make our videos, what we use to make our videos. So I figured we would do the studio tour. And guys, do not mind the mess over here. We're just trying to clean everything up. We're just, we're over cluttered. We got a small apartment and we just got way too much stuff. You know what I'm saying? So let's start off with the guts, the Mac and everything that I use to make the videos. And then we can get onto the music and everything like that. So the first thing that I use is a 27 inch iMac. I think this is a 2020 or 2021. I did get this this year. I was using the 21 and a half inch iMac. I just gave that to Brittany so she could work on, on her projects. I think she wants to start a channel soon. So that's pretty much what we're using. And for the filming aspect, we're using iMovie. iMovie comes with every Apple computer and I just think it's I don't know, I just think it's really good. So that's pretty much what I use to make every video for you guys. Now the program that I've been using for my music is Logic Pro. I've been using GarageBand for a long time. I upgraded to Logic Pro maybe, I don't know, maybe a decade ago. So that's, that's what I've been using to make all my music. So moving on, I kind of have this keyboard slash MIDI controller just tucked away here. Oh my God, I can't get it out. This is the Akai MPK Mini. I don't really play the piano all that much in my recordings. A lot of my recordings are pop punk influenced. I do like to use the MIDI controller for some keyboard parts, some sound effects, you know, a little ambiance in my music. So I don't really use the MPK Mini too much, but it's still great to have in the studio. Over here is the GoPro 9. I believe it's the GoPro 9 Black Edition. I use this to film all the outdoor vlogs for you guys, like the banana tea recipe video, all the outdoor vlogs that we do going to Jersey and all the different hiking adventures that we do and all the different hiking adventures that we do, we just use the GoPro 9 Black Edition. As you guys can see over here, I have a pair of Yamaha HS7 monitors. I got one here and I got one over here. I've been using these for a long time. I started using the HS5s and then I just upgraded to the HS7s. It really depends on the room you're in. If you're in a bigger room, you're obviously gonna wanna get bigger monitors and the HS5, 7, and 8s the reason that they're called the five sevens and eights is because it's based on the cone size. So these are seven inch cones. And if you're looking for a flat frequency response, I highly suggest the HS sevens or just the Yamaha HS series. And right here, we got the Yamaha HS eight S. It's a subwoofer. It's really great when you're recording your bottom end. It's really a game changer. If you don't have the Yamaha subwoofer, you definitely hear a difference when you're doing your final mix. You don't really have that bottom end. You don't really have that to reference, like whether it's the bass guitar or the kick drum. Down here, this is actually pretty interesting what I have here. And right down here, I have the Sans Amp Bass Driver Tech 21. This is an absolute game changer when it comes to having that really great bassy sound. Not that really low end bass, that kind of metallic -y, that like mid range, punk rock kind of bass sound. Like if you listen to Blink-182, if you listen to Rancid, it's got that really like punchy sound. And if that's the sound you're looking for, this is definitely the preamp that you want to get. Now, I also have it hooked up to the Nemesis Delay and the Palladium. And the Palladium has a really cool distortion that I like. And I actually link it up to the Nemesis over here because the Nemesis gives it a delay, but I don't really use too much delay. If you use it just right with these settings that I have, I don't know if you guys could see that. But if you have such a slight delay on here with the Palladium, what it does, it gives it more of a reverb. You got, you got a little bit of a reverb effect, which sounds really great when you're recording guitar. And right down here, I have the NS2. I believe that's the NS2. It's a noise suppressor. It pretty much makes it easier so you don't have a lot of feedback going on with your guitars and I highly recommend. So this is the setup I have over here. I got the Sans Amp bass driver, the Nemesis delay, the Palladium with the NS2. So if you hook this up right, um, it sounds really great. Now let's check out the guitars that I have. Now the one on the far right is a Gibson Les Paul Standard. I've wanted one my entire life. I, <laughs> I've been playing guitar for so long. I've 
played on a lot of cheap instruments. I played a lot of Squires. I played a lot of Epiphone Les Pauls. I had an Epiphone Les Paul Custom Pro and I mean it sounded great but it ain't a Gibson. You know what I'm saying? Just so you can see that it's actually a Gibson right there. It's a little dusty but that's just because of the room. We definitely play the heck out of this guitar a lot. I use this guitar mostly for like my lead guitar parts. All right, so next up over here, we got the Fender HSS. It's an American Stratocaster, and the reason why it's called HSS is because if you look here, it's got the humbucker and the two single coil pickups. And the reason I really wanted to get this Stratocaster is because Let's be real, the Gibson Les Paul is super heavy. It's made out of mahogany wood. I wanted to get the light feeling of the Stratocaster, but I wanted to get the sound of the Gibson Les Paul. That's why I got the HSS Stratocaster. And I use this mostly for my rhythm section. And I use the Gibson Les Paul for like my lead guitar parts, like my soloing, or if I'm using like, uh, like lead harmonies, like lead rhythmic harmonies, if that makes any sense. If you listen to a lot of pop punk, you'll know what I'm talking about. And right over here, we got the American made Fender Precision Bass. Check that out. And this is my favorite bass guitar in the whole wide world. I only play precision basses. I mean, I play a lot of different basses, but you know, if I'm playing like pop punk or punk rock kind of stuff, I definitely choose the Fender Precision Bass over like everything else. Now for my vocals, if you guys could see, this is the Rode NT1A. This is literally in probably almost every single recording studio in the country. Like this is definitely one vocal mic that you have to have in your arsenal. Not only is it great for vocals, but you can actually use this as a room mic. Like if you're recording like an acoustic guitar, if you're recording drums, you can kind of have it as an overhead room mic, I guess you can say. My dad actually bought this one for me maybe, I don't know, like seven years ago, and I've recorded a lot of vocals with the Rode NT1A. I think it's like $200, $225, something like that. That's definitely the mic I recommend for you guys if you want to do vocals or if you want to record some acoustic guitar. Or, you know, the great thing about this mic, it, it's a condenser mic, it's a large diaphragm condenser mic. And the thing that's so great about it is it's multi-use. You know, you can record acoustic guitar, you can record your vocals, you can record backing vocals, you can use it as a room mic if you got some drums going on or something. So you can use this mic for a lot of different things. Now this guitar is mostly used for songwriting and what I mean, this is the Martin D18 by the way. You guys can see right here. I really love Martin. Um, Martin and Taylor guitars I think are the best. Gibson makes some really good guitars. This was definitely an expensive guitar, but I use this for songwriting. So if I'm trying to write a new song and I have the lyrics written down and I'm trying to find that melody, I would, you know, take that acoustic guitar, try to figure out the melody, try to figure out the notes. I would create that as some framework so that way I can go in back into the studio, put it on the iMac, put it on the Gibson Les Paul we got over here, put it on the Fender, the bass. So that way I can kind of structure my songs that way. And if you guys are wondering what this super annoying thing is, this super bright light that you probably see bouncing off the reflection of my shades like in nearly every single video. This is the Mount Dog. I got it from Amazon. It was like $35. I highly recommend it if you're recording in a dark room because if you try to record in a darker room, it's really hard to get that high quality. So since I'm filming with my primary camera, I can't really show you what the camera is, obviously because I'm filming it, so there's no way for me to do that. So I'm gonna put the link in the description below. We're pretty much using a Canon DSLR. It's actually the Rebel SL2 Canon DSLR. It's a really great camera. I've been using this camera for all of my recordings for the last maybe two years or so. I've had this camera for maybe two, two and a half years. I got it two or three Christmases ago. It's been my go-to camera for like everything that I've recorded. Every single video that you've watched has been filmed with this unless if I was doing an outdoor vlog I would use the GoPro 9 black edition like I showed you earlier now the next thing we're gonna show you is the rack I know that's super important a lot of you guys have been asking me you know what kind of you know what kind of setup you got with the rack so let's check that out all right so we got a lot of stuff going on here in the rack some of the stuff I don't really use anymore I just kind of kept it in the rack a lot of this stuff is really old equipment that I haven't really touched that much so let's talk about the stuff that I use on a daily basis let me get this out of the way oh and by the way this is a Sony MD DR 7506. These are like standard studio headphones. Um, if you guys are all about beats, beats are trash. So check out these Sony's. They're like the best. And right here, we got the audio interface. This is a must have in the studio. Every songwriter, everybody that makes music needs to have an audio interface if you're recording through a computer. And I actually have the Scarlett Focusrite 18i20. I've been using it for like the last year. It's a really great piece of equipment. It was like $500, but it's definitely a must have. And right down below, this is the GSP 1101. They don't even make this anymore. I've had this 
for at least 10 or 12 years. I think you can probably get it used. This is the this is from Digitech, so it's the Digitech GSP 1101. It's a guitar preamp, and it's really cool. You got a lot of different sounds you can choose from, you know, for your guitar. I don't think you could even see that. No, you can't see that. Oh, that's pretty lame. But I don't really use this as much. I kind of use a lot of the preamp stuff from Easy Mix. But I haven't really been using the Digitech GSP 1101 lately because I've just kind of been using the setup that I have down here. Ever since I got the Palladium and the Nemesis, I've just been super in love with that. So that's why I haven't, <laughs> I haven't really been using the Digitech all that much. Now right here, this is just a tuner. It's a Rocktron Versatune. It's just a guitar tuner. It's rack mounted you know i used it for a little bit but now if you guys can see here i just kind of have a clip-on tuner it's just so much easier to tune my guitar when i had to use this rocktron guitar tuner it was like really annoying i would have to unplug and replug and unplug and replug just so you know just so i can keep my guitars in tune and i recommend the clip-on tuner so i just kind of just still have it here now the next thing here is the voice channel this is like a vocal preamp that you can use i haven't used it in a long time i use easy mix for all my vocals my processing all that stuff so it's really good to have but it's kind of outdated technology all right so next we have the multi-comp pro this is pretty much a compressor you can compress your bass your guitar so you can kind of control how wild your guitars are running, like you can control your feedback with the noise gate, that sort of thing, but I use Easy Mix for this. It's just kind of outdated. I just don't really have a use for it. So if I'm recording a musician or a band and they want to use some of this, you know, rack mounted stuff instead of just Easy Mix, you know, I know a lot of old school guys like to use you know, the rack mounted stuff over over the digital stuff. So that's why I kind of have a lot of this stuff available. And the same thing goes for the TC Electronic, the M350. This is a reverb processor. And again, I don't really, I don't really use this. So. so mostly what I'm using is the audio interface. I use the Digitech from time to time. Uh, the rack mounted tuner, not really. I still use the voice channel sometimes. Like if I'm looking for a certain effect on my vocals that you know Easy Mix just does not have, you can actually customize the way you want your vocals to sound. So that's why I like to use the voice channel. That's why I still have it on here. So that's pretty much everything we got for this full studio tour. I think I kind of went over everything here that I wanted to go over with you guys. What we got in the studio, we are buying a house next summer, maybe in Virginia. We don't really know where we're gonna buy a house. It really depends on where the housing market's gonna be next year. So we're kind of looking on, we're kind of looking on Zillow just to, just to kind of see. So we want to have a nice recording studio. I'm trying to get a lot of bands to record, you know, we get down there. It's gonna be a lot of fun, it's gonna be really cool. And we are going to be starting a music channel. I know I've mentioned it in a few other videos. I'll let you guys know ahead of time when we start the music channel, I am gonna upload some videos on that channel first. So that way when you subscribe to the channel, you actually have some content to watch. It's just not gonna be some random blank channel, you know what I'm saying? So be on the lookout for that. I think it's gonna be called the punk scene. So I figured we got the 420 scene. The music channel, we're gonna name it the punk scene. I think that would be like really Really cool. All right, guys, so before we close off today's video, I want to thank everyone on screen for supporting us on Patreon since February. I really appreciate the love and support. So I'm going to close off today's video. Be sure to drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, stay safe. Peace.